I'm not homeless. I um, live in um, low-income housing. Still homeless, but <laughs> um, I'm unemployed. I, um, I have a nine-year-old little girl, and um, I lost my job at McDonald's two years ago, and been looking for work ever since. And um, it, I heard the guy saying how hard it is trying to take care of home, but it's ten times harder on a woman. With a child, it hurt every day, not being able to provide for my daughter, or take her in the store, her not get what she want, or her not get what I like to give her, you know. And I only got but one. Um, Christmas go by, I gotta ask other people to help out, and it hurts because I want to be the one to make her day or put a smile on her face, and um. Take your time. Take your time. That's why we here. It's sad. It's, it hurts because I know she's looking at me as that role model. And the fact that I can't understand, I can't explain to her what happened. She's just looking at me like I don't care. Like, <laughs> and I love my baby. Then it's being in low income housing. I don't have rent, but I still have the, that light bill. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> it's high. <laughs> That's all I can say. How much is your light bill? A month? Yeah. Close to $200. Mm -hmm. Close to $200. That's a lot of money when you don't have it. In a two bedroom house. Mm -hmm. So even going to this person and that person, can I borrow this? Can I borrow that? Mm -hmm. It's not enough. Because you still got to find a way to pay it back. And then you get a job, they go up on your rent. <laughs> they cut your food stamps off. <laughs> so I just want to say, men, I applaud you. And women, keep your head up. Um, my name is Dorinda Gatling and I'm the clerk for the town of Roper and I'm here to speak about a twofold dilemma that's uh, and that is a citizen's ability or the lack thereof to pay utilities and taxes which must be collected in order for the town to meet its obligations to provide services to its citizens Roper as a small rural community mirrors many communities across northeastern North Carolina we provide water and sewer services for our citizens many who live in our community are elderly as the mayor said that are elderly and live on fixed income. They live in homes that have plumbing ne which needs to be upgraded. Most times there are leaks because of the plumbing and their bills increase, their water bills increase and I hear about it but there's little that I can do. So then they have to add a uh, plumber to their list of priorities in addition to housing, food, medicine, electricity and water sewer in terms of what bills they choose to pay and water sewer usually falls at the end of the list. There are many people who live in our community that are under or unemployed. Their wages aren't livable wages. People have to work multiple jobs when they can get them. 
I see them shuffle their bills to keep their water on. And again, water and sewer usually falls at the end of their list. And I have to become aggressive because inevitably on a, mo on, on a monthly basis, there are a number of folks whose water I have to turn off, even when I know they don't have the money. It's hard to do and frankly stressful because I personally know them and I know what it's like. Yet I have to do my job because we have to keep the system running and it costs money to run the system. You know, with all of this wealth and all of the possibilities, there's no way in the world we can keep saying we can't provide homes for those who need it and food for those who need it and bed for those who need it. And, and, and that's why we have to fight. While you struggle, we have to fight, but also you join with. I hope, Gene, one day we can pass folks like, you know, come take these pictures and have them at a summit because we're going to make folks have to see this. So I'm just here to say, it is hard, and if it's a door open some kind of way, I would like to know where. Instead of all this politic mess going around about who this and who's in here and where it is in there, why not come to the people and ask, hey, what can we do for you? We sending money every year, every month. We, they taking out our checks and stuff, big time money. We don't even see it, but yet they telling us, oh, what you call me over there in the rack doing this and that. What has that got to do with Washington? We're the ones suffering here. We didn't ask them to do this, but they put it on us. Oh, are we fighting for your freedom? What freedom? We ain't got no freedom. We're getting killed right here. And people are going to the point where they're so frustrated, they say, oh, I'll go out and rob a store. I'll go to the neighbor and I'll break in his house and take what he got. Do you know what that neighbor worked for? That neighbor might have worked 10 years for what he got. And then you gonna bust in his house and take his stuff? It's not fair. The cops, they sit back, oh well, uh, we ain't getting enough pay. I ain't going the rest of my life for that. The politicians that are good, they can't do nothing because the politicians are bad, keep jumping on them. Oh, I'm gonna stomp you on the neck, you ain't getting nowhere. Oh, we don't wanna hear that. But we are all a people, we all bleed blood. And if they would stop looking at who's rich, who's poor, who's middle wages, then maybe we can make something out of this world. 